Just now, the Arizona Supreme Court issued its opinion in Planned Parenthood v. Mays. My executive order removing the ability of county attorneys to prosecute women and doctors for performing abortions remains. The Attorney General for the state of Arizona, which was once a, a bastion of limited government and promoting the principles of liberty, has now become a state where the Attorney General and the governor of the state of Arizona are now saying, the law be damned, nothing will stop us from murdering innocent babies on today's Tree of Liberty Society. Alrighty, so I'm sure this is you know not news to a whole lot of you that the, in Arizona, uh, there the courts, which everybody says, oh, the Supreme Court said, Right there, the, the courts have ruled that this, that, and the other thing, and so we just can't have liberty. But when it comes to protecting babies, not engaging in infanticide, then all of a sudden they become these these constitutional experts. Where now it's their job, which of course we say it it is to enforce the constitution, and and that the the courts are not the final arbiters. But they only say that when it comes to killing babies. Otherwise, it's, oh, obey the courts. Whatever the courts say, we have to do. But now that the courts have said that, hey, you know what, this law that you, that the legislature passed that says, hey, you know what, killing babies is wrong and uh, you're going to get punished if you do it, uh, all of a sudden they become big old nullification uh, uh, you know, proponents. So I, I want to play you a clip from the attorney general of the state of Arizona talking about this issue. Arizona justices revived an 1864 law barring all abortions except in cases where the mother's life is at risk. It would replace the previous state law that allowed abortion through 15 weeks of pregnancy and there would be no exceptions for rape or incest. It's the latest state ban on abortion since the U.S. Supreme Court reversed Roe v. Wade nearly two years ago. And the state's attorney general says she will not enforce it. Arizona Attorney General Chris Mays is here with me now. Good morning. Good morning. So you say you're not going to enforce this law. Why? Well, for a number of reasons, we won't be enforcing this law. First and foremost, it is unconstitutional. It violates our state's right to privacy, which is expressly written into our constitution. Secondly, so going back to right the, the right to privacy, all, all of a sudden the Fourth Amendment, which says that the government cannot search you without a warrant, all of a sudden now that states that I can do whatever I want to uh, my child. As long as it's still in my womb, I can do whatever I want because that's privacy. It's as if it was in you know, their own home. And using that same logic again, so now that means if your baby is now born, because I have a right to privacy, it's in my own home. That means up until they leave the house, I have the right to kill that child because I have a right to privacy. That's where that logic leads to. It's insanity. It, it leads from infanticide all the way up to full-blooded, you know, full-blooded murder, which of course, you know, uh, distinguishing murder between innocent children and adults, of course, I would say that full-on murder is less bad than infanticide because an adult, you know, they have the opportunity to defend themselves as opposed to an, an innocent baby, especially an innocent unborn child. Uh, but they're claiming that, that the constitution, she's just this constitutionalist that she's going to stand up against the courts and she's going to enforce the constitution as an attorney general does your constitutional right, supposedly to be able to murder babies is what they're going to defend. But that only applies when it's coming to the murder of babies, okay? A lot of Republicans, unfortunately, as well, are very much in favor of the murders of, of innocent children. Uh, but there is a, uh, we have a, here a Republican governor that, or a former attorney general uh, that is talking about, um, you know, the idea of the attorney general just deciding not to enforce the law in this article for governing. And in this article, it's titled, What Happens When the Attorney General Refuses to Defend a Law? And uh, we have here Greg Zoller, the former um, uh, AG in Indiana, who says that uh, he, it says here that he had to defend all kinds of laws he didn't like, including the death penalty, which he opposed on religious grounds. Indeed, most lawmakers, I mean, lawyers take on uh, cases and clients they don't believe in. 
Then he goes on to say, he says, the courts are empowered to make decision the decision of whether a law is constitutional or not. Obviously, he hasn't actually read the Constitution. That's not what it says. Um, but that's what, so he's saying the courts are the ones that make the decision if it's constitutional. And to bring that question to the courts, here has to be a lawyer, uh, there has to be a lawyer on both sides to judge it. And so then he gave examples of errors of, of uh, California's Proposition 8 and the fact that it, the uh, attorney general not in uh, defending it made it and so that it took longer for the bill, to, for the law to be struck down by the Supreme Court. And so it causes problems, he's saying, that if you don't do that. So um, and so he's going on and on and talking about how it is not the attorney general job to um, decide to nullify a law, that that's up to the courts to decide if a law is constitutional or not. But we have here the attorney general of Arizona saying that she's not going to enforce this law against murdering babies simply because she said it was unconstitutional, that she has a constitutional right to murder babies. And so, but then we have the uh, the lefties, of course, again, people promoting big government. Um, we have here this article from um, everytownlaw.org when she, uh, talking about sheriffs refusing to follow the law. Talks about um, laws. Of course, they always use these stupid common sense gun safety laws. Just it's just double speak, which to make you think that oh, well, there's nothing wrong with this. That that the the Second Amendment saying that Congress shall make no law is you know irrelevant. That because it's, now it's common sense restrictions against your right to defend yourself. Uh, and then we have um, New Mexico's recent decision to close the unlicensed gun sale background and sheriffs refusing to obey those uh, those laws. It says here, but we have watched with dismay in recent weeks as county sheriffs in some of these uh, same states have publicly announced that they will not enforce these newly enacted laws. Their reason? They say that they believe these laws violate the Second Amendment of the Constitution. They don't, it doesn't matter. But it's not about belief. That's like saying, I believe that the sun is going to come up in the East tomorrow. Anybody that has the ability to read simple English understands that any restriction whatsoever is a, a violation of the prohibition in the, in the, in the, found in the Second Amendment, as well as the Tenth Amendment to the Constitution. There was nothing authorized to the federal government to regulate firearms. In fact, the Second Amendment strictly prohibits it. And so the, this, this double speak of saying, you know, oh, they're just these people off their rockers. They, they believe that it's against the, uh, the Second Amendment. It says, to be clear, the laws they oppose are precisely the types of laws courts have repeatedly upheld against constitutional challenges, finding that they do not violate the Second Amendment. But the problem with these sheriff's actions is not just that they are wrong. These laws are con. The real problem is that these sheriffs are overstepping their role in the constitutional system and in the process, undermining the rule of law. So for these big government baby murderers, they have the right and the ability to arbitrarily say that they have the right to kill babies. But if you have a sheriff or an attorney general that says, you know what, this is a clear, just reading the language, I don't need a court to tell me what two plus two equals. I know how to read and I can not enforce that law because I have sworn to uphold the constitution. If it was simply up to the, the, the courts to uh, be the sole arbiters of what is constitutional or not, why would the sheriff, why would the attorney general have to have the uh, uh, the oath of office where they swear to uphold and defend the constitution of their state as well as uh, of the United States. It doesn't make any sense. If their job isn't to do that, it's just to blindly, like a robot, I am following orders. I just need to do what I am told. I read the law. That's why, why play, do an oath to the constitution if that's all they're supposed to do, just blindly just do what they're what they're told by the legislatures. No. Every single step of the way, the founding fathers followed the example of nullification personally. They had the states follow nullification. We have the Virginia resolutions. You have uh, Thomas uh, Jefferson saying that nullification is the rightful remedy when any form of level of government violates the law. You have James Madison saying that uh, that the states and the people are the final arbiters of what is constitutional and what is not. 
and the it is the hypocrisy of the baby killers is on full display here when they say that they can nullify a law prohibiting the murder of babies and then all of a sudden they turn around and they say oh your ability to defend yourself against harm from an individual or the state oh of course you know you cannot nullify that we need to wait for the courts to decide that one we need to understand this that what this what is really going on here this is a war against children this is a war uh, the government has has declared war on us they say we can kill babies you cannot defend yourself but as plain as day of what they are saying and what their intentions are it's essential that we understand that and that we act accordingly that's what we're doing here at the tree of liberty society i encourage you to please make sure to not allow them to silence us as you know uh, they have used raids. They have used intimidation. They have used attention kidnapping of my children. Uh, they have done things over and over again. They have uh, uh, attempted to take away my ability to provide for my family. And uh, just the list goes on and on. We need your help. Please go to the Tree of Liberty Society right now. Become a member or make a one-time donation and get a fantastic gift, a digital copy of my book, Invasion, Volume 1 or 2, or the audio version of Volume 1. Please go to Tree of Liberty Society right now and help us out today. Help us go on the offense against these people that are at war with us so that we can once again restore lost liberty. I'm Ben McClintock, and I'll see you next time.